Dear all, I'm Claudio Castiglione and today I have the pleasure to present you uh, my research in collaboration with Professor Fracascia from uh, La Sapienza University of Rome and Professor Alfieri and Pastore from Politecnico di Torino. I want to introduce you to the preliminary outcomes of the research regarding the industrial symbiosis barriers and drivers. Uh, firstly, I will provide you a research outline to show you the main contribution and the research gap addressed by this systematic literature review. Then, I will present a brief description of the methodology we are following and the main ideas of our framework definition to classify the industrial symbiosis barriers and drivers. Finally, it follows a short discussion about the final users of this research. Let me start with research outline and research motivation. Industrial symbiosis is a complicated topic, broadly addressed by scholars in these last 20 years. However, a comprehensive framework capable of inspiring the establishment and development of new industrial symbiosis is missing because of several reasons. Uh, for example, there are many barriers and drivers of different nature, which impact in different ways each of all the single stakeholders involved in the industrial symbiosis. Let's think to companies, decision makers, universities, eco-industrial park managers, each of them are affected by drivers and barriers. Moreover, industrial symbiosis is a well-defined and unique concept in the literature. But in practice, each network has its own structure, business model, developing typology and endemic characteristics, such as local culture and community support. So, uh, we propose a new framework, a new comprehensive framework. Uh, we identified more than 800 peer-reviewed journal papers from Scopus and Web of Science. All of these papers have been analyzed and to identify barriers and drivers. They are classified by a novel approach that considers three main points. New product development, industrial symbiosis maturity level, the institutional capacity of the network. Subsequently, all the barriers and drivers have been divided in our classification and used to define a framework to support scholars, practitioners, students and all the readers interested in industrial symbiosis by leading them through the main barriers and drivers nature and the main success and failures reasons. Finally, the selective masking framework is implemented and updated to allow each single stakeholder to easily deepen the specific topic when they are interested in, to uh, observe barriers and drivers only under particular aspects or context conditions, to avoid all this broad um, literature. One of the novelty of the industrial symbiotic framework is the two-level classification. The core of the industrial symbiotic networks are the production companies, of course, because they produce, exchange and reuse waste. Therefore, the first classification layer is the new product development stage in which the companies described in each paper are in that moment. Uh, they maybe are planning a new product, for example, or they are creating the supply network or they are already uh, in production, for example. This stage affects the types of barriers and drivers that companies face when trying to implement or establish industrial symbiosis. And this classification helps us to understand the barriers and drivers reported in each paper. The second layer that affects the drivers and barriers is the industrial symbiosis maturity level. Um, the companies described in the papers can be at different stage of industrial symbiosis maturity level, from willingness to develop a new industrial symbiosis 
for a specific product or all the set of products of the company, which is an exploratory stage, to the operational stage in which companies face operational issues of industrial symbiosis. For example, uh, variable quality of the received waste. The combination between the two layers, new product development stage and industrial symbiosis maturity level, allow a better comprehension of barriers and drivers experienced by the companies uh, described in the papers. Why? Uh, because it allows to identify a deeper interconnection between root causes and potential facilitations. So, uh, barriers and driver structure in each two level classification is then divided according to criteria. If the drivers and barriers come from inside or outside of the industrial symbiotic network, and second one, if they affect a single company or stakeholder, or a part of the sub of a part of the network or the entire industrial symbiotic network. This further classification helps to identify the entry point where the drivers must be exploited and the effects amplified, and where the barriers must be tackled off and reduced. However, one last step is missing, because despite the barriers and the drivers, some uh, industrial symbiotic networks can overcome the obstacles and go on with their development while others fail or do not emerge, even if they are in the same or even, uh, or even in better condition, external condition, environment. Therefore, here is the institutional capacity and is introduced here, because it put in relation barriers and drivers that we have found. Institutional capacity is the ability of the entire industrial symbiotic network to respond and resolve the problems as a single entity. It entails knowledge resources, uh, for example, the competencies, the skills and the technologies, the relational resources, such as the trust and the industrial symbiotic network governance, and finally, the mobilization capacity, which is the final ability of practically exploit knowledge and relational resources. Each stakeholder of the industrial symbiotic network has its institutional capacity that contributes to the overall industrial symbiotic institutional capacity. Uh, and though the industrial symbiotic institutional capacity is more than the direct sum of the institutional capacity of each single stakeholder. This research has two concurrent goals. The first is the creation of a body of knowledge about barriers and drivers to establish industrial symbiosis and support their development. The second goal is providing a practical and immediate support to all the readers directly involved in a specific industrial symbiotic projects or also all the interested in deepening some specific aspect of supporting industrial symbiosis development. Selective masking structure of the framework helps to highlight specific educational path for specific domains or contexts to make easier the understanding of barriers and drivers and their more profound interrelations with their context. In a second time, all these separated paths can be combined to reconduct all the main ideas emerged in one with those stemming from the other one to have the big picture in a step-by-step -step approach. Uh, I would like to thank you for your attention and any comments, suggestions and interactions will be warmly welcomed. Thank you.